Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I, of course, I'm so excited. Being girl for your TikToks, dude. They're so funny. <laughs> really? That's so funny. Obsessed with them. Um, well, first of all, how are you? I'm good. Um, I had a, I ran a show last night that was awesome. very successful. Um, so I'm like exhausted, but I'm on a high from that. So I'm, yeah, very good. How often do you get to do stand up like on a weekly basis? Um, a couple nights a week. Yeah. Ideally, I, it would be like every night, but I'm booking, yeah, like a couple nights a week. Cool. And so, what is, what is your day job? So, for my day job, I make I work for an agency called Imagine Media. It's I M G N Media, and we clients basically hire us to run their social media so i do a lot of like comedy content for different companies like whether that's making so some of our clients are like levi's true tv um so i do a lot of like making video content and comedy stuff for different brands um our whole thing is like we want to reach gen z and i think like you know these brands like don't know how to make themselves like cool and like have a TikTok presence and so that's what they hire us to do. So it's cool. It is very much like comedy adjacent. It's very creative. So it's kind of a perfect gig for a comedian. Perfect. I love that. Yeah. Um, so growing up, have you always been a big fan of comedy? Like did you know it was going to be a part of what you wanted to do ultimately or did it come later? So it's funny, I feel like I meet so many comics who are like, I watch comedy specials all the time. I grew up doing like what, knowing all the like classics and all this. I was never like a huge fan of comedy, like of stand up. I loved, um, I mean, obviously I liked funny movies and funny, like when I was little, I loved like the Amanda show and all that and like whatever, but I wasn't like watching stand up that much. I mainly just, so I was never like a huge fan of stand up and was like, I want to do that. I just knew that I loved making people laugh and that it was like the one thing that I was like really good at. And from like the youngest age I can remember, my like form of social currency was like making people laugh. You know, I was like, I might, I was like kind of a chubby little kid. I, I, might, I was like, I might not be like, the prettiest girl in the class, but I can make everyone laugh in the whole room. And I was like, that is so valuable. Yes. Yeah. So it was always my like form of social currency. And like, I just loved the way it felt. And I was always making my family laugh. Like there was never, when I started doing stand up, nobody in my life was like, oh really? Like, wow, that's so surprising. It was just like, yeah, that makes sense. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. But yeah, I was never like a huge stand up fan. Okay. Um, so sometimes I feel like a fraud because I'm like, you know, not able to take part in some of those conversations about the classics and all the, you know, hey, stuff you people know. Yeah, you're just like, but I just, I like to do it and you know, that's, that's what matters. Right, exactly. Would you be happy with just doing stand up or your gig right now you would, yeah? Yeah, so I would love to just do Com like my own comedy um that's the goal is to be able to like support myself doing that um i think that with today's you know the way like it works today the internet and tiktok and everything i do think ideally i would be making money from stand-up but also like subs like also making some of my income through tiktok and through videos because i do like making like um video content and i love podcasting and things like that so i would love to do a combo of stand up and then video content and sort of just have that be my whole brand um and eventually not have a day job but do my own thing perfect yeah do you ever find so you being a younger comedian and there's so many entities like TikTok, Instagram, like there's so many different ways that you can produce content. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed or it's just more opportunity or where would you like it's, to focus more on than another? Because it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's crazy because it's both of those things at the same time. It's part of me is like, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what 
to do. Like I'm 29, I'm not like Gen Z, you know? So I, I am a little bit like not as savvy as Gen Z is, but I'm also, you know, I still understand technology and everything. So it is, it is the endless opportunity is overwhelming but it's also amazing because you don't need anyone's permission anymore to make things and to like get your content out there you don't need a network to sign off on you know a web series you can just do it and put it out there and that's almost daunting because it's like oh my god the only thing stopping me sometimes is me and you know my I, maybe I'm busy or maybe I'm holding myself back because I'm, I am scared to just start the project and get it going. So I think it's like equal parts overwhelming because there's so many, there's YouTube, there's TikTok, there's, you know, like there's so much, mm -hmm. but at the same time, that's so much opportunity. Right. So it's, it's just because we're such like a hustle culture, like do the most until you're burnt out and want to die. Mm -hmm. and so it's totally it's a balance. But um, stand up yeah. is really like that, too. And I try to avoid that. Like I, you know, for better or worse, I don't know what the right solution is, but I don't push myself to the limit for stand up. Like I'm I know a lot of comics who like would never take a week off or something. And like I need that sometimes i need to be my like take a break go home see my family see my friends go out and like be like live my life you know and have so that i have things to talk about on stage and um i think that's been like a huge thing that's kept me going for so many years is like recognizing when i'm starting to burn out and being like you know what i'm taking a break and that's fine mm -hmm. totally it's hard to i'm definitely a person who's like FOMO is like so bad. Mm -hmm. The right and especially, um, yeah, you see all these. Another thing about like TikTok world and social media is like you see everyone around you hustling so hard. And I mean, whether or not I know, like everything we put on social media is fake and it's all just smoke and mirrors. But you do it convinces you that like everyone around you is working so much harder than you are, and everyone around you is so much more successful than you are, and it's just like a lot of pressure and i think sometimes removing myself from that is helpful because i do get caught up in like oh i'm not doing enough i'm not doing enough mm -hmm. um and like comparing myself to other people it's just like impossible not to but yeah i mean it's just a lot there's a lot of opportunity to get your stuff out there do you feel like as a woman in comedy that you feel like you have to work even harder or has it been like easier than you thought or way more difficult than you thought or do you have people um, other women in comedy that you know to that have guided you yeah i mean i am the first couple years doing comedy was all like open mics in rooms of just me and a bunch of dudes mm -hmm. but i think that i never felt super like ostracized which is lucky maybe it's because i didn't let myself feel that way or i you know i had the confidence to just be like well i know that i'm funny and i you know it, it's confusing though because it is a very male dominated field but i do think like when you move up to the level that i'm at and, you, and even further it starts to kind of weed out the men who are just like telling dick jokes and you know like like racist jo dick jokes and it's just it kind of weeds that out and like the good women rise to the top and there's a good amount of us you know like there's a lot of women in comedy now and i think like strength in numbers if we stick together like i think i mean i have so much respect for like the comedy like women who have made it in comedy i just think that's like the most amazing thing but I do feel, um, I'm always aware of like how many women are on the lineup. Like I'm the only one, you know, so it's always on my mind, but I will, it's never been something that I've like actually felt super upset about. And I think I'm lucky because I think a lot of other females would say they've had like negative experiences, but I think I've gotten pretty lucky. Good. Well, okay. I, when I was looking at some of your stand up. A clip from Impractical Jokers came up. How, mm -hmm. how did that? So, okay, that was so funny. I, when I moved to New York in 2016, I was working as a, I knew I wanted to do 
stand up, but I kind of didn't know like what to do to make money and how to make my way in. So I started um, working as a PA, like a production assistant, and I was working on the show Broad City for a while, um, which was amazing. They are the best. Um, and so I did that for like two seasons and then that was years ago. And then about a year ago when this Impractical Jokers thing happened, I was randomly contacted by a girl I worked with on Broad City and she was like, hey, I am now the producer for Impractical Jokers. Do you want to be on an episode? And I was like, yeah, I guess. Like, what do I... I was like, of course, like, what do I have to do? And she was like, we just need you to cry on command. And I was like, <laughs> oh shit. I was like, okay, like, let's see if we can make, ha make it happen. But the reason um, the girl who they originally cast got sick with COVID like two days before. So they were, I guess, like scrambling. And she was like, oh, I know somebody. And they asked me. So I'm not happy that that girl got COVID, but it did work out for me. Yes. That's so that was really fun. How long was that like whole sequence? Was that like a whole day or just like for? It was a day of like sitting in the waiting room because all these other people that they were having on the show like genuinely thought they were going to do some focus group. I was the only one who was in on it and they didn't know I was in on it. Like, so I was acting like I was just there for a focus group with all of them. So it was a lot of like sitting and waiting. It was a full day of just sitting in this room with other people waiting to get taken into the focus group um and i'm trying to like get in the zone of like oh my god bitch you have to cry if you don't cry this is gonna be so embarrassing oh, wow. you have one one chance to do it um and then finally at the end of the day they brought me in and it was just like one take i only had one basically like they edited it a lot to make it super short but basically like what you saw in the episode is what happened. I just went out there, he talked to me for a little bit, he played a trick on me and then, you know, there was all this like chaos that happened and then I started crying. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was my TV debut. That's so good. Which so of funny. Your, your TikToks, which one first like really kind of put you on the map? as far as my favorite ones are like the the famous like songs of course what yeah was, yeah yeah you know, how you got started um or? yeah no actually i had another tiktok account before that the, my current one that was at like fourteen thousand followers and it was just like stuck there and i don't know why it was not moving and i was posting all the time and i was posting like good content so i was confused about that and i just decided like in september of this year so like a couple months ago to just start over, start a new account. Um, and once I started posting to the new account, the one that everybody now, not everybody, but like the one that is now my account, um, I immediately started getting more views. And, and I was like, I think my old account was like shadow banned or something. I don't know, but I was like, okay, done with that account. And then I started to do this one and things started to blow up. Like I had one about, um, talking about like your roommate's work voice and how like, have you, do you ever hear your roommate's work voice and you're like, oh my God, who is that? So some of my videos of me just like talking to camera um, blew up first. And then the lips of an angel one was the first one where people, and I had posted that a long time ago on my old TikTok and it didn't get any attention because it just didn't get any views. So I reposted it to my new TikTok and that one blew up and I was like, oh my God, people love this song analysis thing. <laughs> so I just went with it after that and that was a couple, I mean, it's only been since September that I started that account. So it has not been long um, since I really started doing that. And it's helped a lot. It's it's helped my, my following on both TikTok and Instagram and that in turn helps my stand up. Cause like, for example, last night at my show, um, that I run, I had a bunch of people who just know me from Instagram and think I'm funny and, you know, wanted to come see me live. And so it kind of all is one circle of everything's related, you know? Back to all these entities give you so much. Yeah. Um, that's great. Um, yeah. Does, do you typically perform in the same clubs or do you just kind of skip around like... A bunch of I bounce around a lot. My favorite, I love New York Comedy Club. That's like where I've been getting up a lot recently. 
Um, but I'm kind of at a point where I'll, I, the stage time is so valuable to me. There's so many comics in New York City who are like fighting for stage time. I am still at the point where I'm like, you know what? I'll do bar shows, I'll do club shows, I'll do, you know, not that like my standards are low, but I try to take every opportunity that I can at this point. So I'm getting up everywhere. Good. Um, I know you said growing up, like you weren't necessarily a big fan of stand up, but nowadays, do you have like go to people that you watch um, all the time or you just kind of do still your own thing? Yeah, no, I do. I love Nikki Glazer. Like, she is so funny to me and so amazing how she's made it. Like, as a woman, just is the biggest ever. And she's also, per like, been super nice to me. She had me open for her once. And I just think, like, she is an ex she is the example of what I would want to be in this industry if I ever make it to be, like, huge. Is someone who, like, genuinely wants to help younger comics and help younger like women you know get in and give them the opportunity so i love her i think she's hilarious my other favorites are nate bargazzi love him i think he's a genius um, and i that is sorry, sorry what i just saw him just, for my dad's um for father's day with awesome oh my god was he so good so good and it's just like wholesome you know like it's not like like, I feel like I could watch it like, with my parents and I'm like, good. Totally. That's what I love about him because his his whole shtick is like, oh, I'm just like this dummy. <laughs> but like, you can't be, you have to be incredibly smart to make jokes that good and to be that successful. So I just love like that kind of juxtaposition of like, he's like, oh, I was in like a really like a shitty math class when I was in high school, but then he like rounds it off with this incredible comedy, like a joke about it. And you're just like, you are brilliant. And I love that. I love comedy that's not like about sex. A lot of the time I love comedy that is just like almost clean, like about everyday things that everybody experiences and I think he's really good about that I also love John Mulaney I think he's similarly very good about that I am in a fight with him um in my mind for having a baby with Olivia Munn but I'm trying to like forget I can move on from it um but yeah I love those ones I love um I mean Nate Bargatze is my favorite John Mulaney I love Bo Burnham. I loved Inside. That like fully changed my life. Um, yeah, I don't know. I watch a little bit of, I try to watch a little bit of everybody to like, you know, see what everybody's doing. But also I do think that I want to have my own voice on stage and I don't want to take anyone else's like, I, cause there was a time, period of time where I was listening to a podcast with these two comics that I love and I, found myself like talking like them on stage and I was like no like shut it down I do not want to just take on someone else's personality or someone else's cadence even it's even like the way people talk I think it's like the same thing like when you hang out with your friends you guys all start to talk the same and you say the same things and you use the same phrases and like so I think podcasting is a, is a slippery slope to listen for me to listen to other comics podcasts is like slippery slope because I you feel like you're friends with them which is the point of a podcast you feel like you're sitting around with your friends and then you're like oh my god I'm starting to talk like them which is fine if you're just a person but if you're a comic and you're trying to like be your own person it's like that's not you can't do that which is tricky because you you appreciate like these people and obviously like they're good at what they do and like you want to take to, like tokens of it and like learn from it but again mm -hmm. So it's really difficult. I've been like obsessed with smart lists. And so I like literally like I've started like I'll like make a joke and like think like my friends will know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, yeah. and like they just don't. Mm, well, I also think another thing about me not watching that much stand up like on Netflix or anything is because I'm actually watching stand up all the time. Like I'm at shows, I'm seeing it live all the time. And I'm lucky enough to be around like the best some some of the best comics in New York City. Like, so I am watching 
amazing comedy all the time to the point where like I don't feel like watching it when I'm at home. I feel like that's my time to like not be thinking about comedy, not be doing comedy. So I really think that that's the reason. I do love it, but I'm seeing so much of it live and I'm seeing so many of my peers who are like starting to blow up and start and who are just genuinely brilliant, incredible, hilarious comedians. So I feel like I'm getting my fix through that. I'm always at live shows. I'm always seeing it happening around me. So I feel like I'm not as much watching like the Netflix specials. Yeah. You know that's what I mean? Like, first hand, I mean, that's that's perfect. And then having that separation um, is important. And mm -hmm. in that same token, how do you like to decompress? Like we said at the beginning, like not fully, like always, always going um, like what you Yeah. Know. I'm actually like super introverted. Um, I think a lot of comics are, even though it's crazy. We like get on stage and are like, blah, 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 like here's every detail of my life. But I'm actually very introverted. I love, I'm such a homebody. I have kind of like stopped drinking so much and like going out as I was like in college in my young 20s. I love just being home with like one or two friends. I love taking an edible and like or smoking weed i love that um and just like being with i really value right now like intimate friendships you know like i do i feel like i am when i'm in a big crowd of people i'm not recharged i feel like i'm left tired and empty but when i either am alone by myself just watching something or if i'm like with a friend one or two friends who are like very important to me and it's a very intimate relationship that recharges me you know like that's just i'm learning the older i get that that's what i value and that's what you know when i get burnt out or i get overwhelmed like just oh i love like making your apartment like a place you love to be you know i think like just little things like lighting a candle and like knowing you have nowhere to be that night is just the best thing so like i need that i need to take those nights for myself especially when you work in an extroverted setting and you are oh my god yeah working to get a group of people to be extroverted themselves to let loose to have fun and so you have to you have to be able to have that space yeah, you have to be on all the time when you're doing comedy. And I just think, you know, if it maybe if it weren't for me doing comedy, I would be looking for that fix and, you know, wanting to go out more because I think I do need a little bit of that. But I'm just, you know, that aspect of my life comes from comedy. I'm very social in the comedy scene and I, you know, that's kind of where I get my fill of like, social life. I mean, not social life, but like really like strong extroverted energy. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What um, shows as of lately have been recharging you that you've been watching? I've been, uh, what shows have I been watching? Um, I loved Abbott Elementary. I yeah. never really like network TV shows or like I never really watched them, but I loved that. I thought it was just like, light and funny and not too serious. Like I can't handle like really serious TV. I just don't have the attention span. I don't really care to get invest so invested. Um, unfortunately, I love The Bachelor franchise. That is just hilarious. It's just a dumpster fire and I love it. It's Bachelor in Paradise is everything. Um, so, I do think like reality, trashy reality TV, I always love. Um, and then like I have my comfort shows, like I love Broad City and I love New Girl. And those are things I'll put on when I'm just like in the background. And those always comfort me. And then like, I'll, you know, I'll watch the, the shows that are like in the zeitgeist, like trending. Like I watch Ginny and Georgia, I'm watching you right now. Um, so I kind of like do a little bit of everything, but yeah, no like real serious, like hour long TV for me. I, I'm like a huge fan of like classic 
movies and TV, and I was like, I need to watch The Sopranos because it's. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it. I was like, gosh, this is this is a lot. Do I just want to be sitting in my living room contemplating like everything ever and more out? Like I would. Yeah, just I'm watch. just like, I'm just like, I can't do it. I, it's for me with The Sopranos. I'm like, I think I already missed it. I missed the time, yes. and I'm just gonna accept that. It's okay, it was not my my thing. Um, yeah. Well, so I don't take too much of your time. I'll just finish with what is the best piece of advice you think you could give to a young comic um, as far as even like making that move to New York? Like that's a really big deal. Yeah. And th what that process kind of looks like for you um, and how, yeah, just how you feel like. Yeah. So it's a scary thing to do, obviously, but what I did is I just made sure like get something that will pay your rent. You know, like that's always gonna be the first priority is like, I was working at Soul Cycle and I was like doing a bunch of random stuff to make money when I first moved here. So just move here, just move here. You will find, you will get a job. Like there's so many, work at a restaurant, do anything that you can do to pay your rent. And then my advice for um, stand up is like, just get on stage there is no there is no other way to start than to start yeah. you know what i mean like it's the scariest thing is getting on there for the first time and then it's like oh okay i'm actually i guarantee you like you're not going to be the worst one at the open mic some of the stuff you see at open mics is so terrible and they don't even know like they're so confident and you're just like this is so bad so i think my advice is just to do it because you're always gonna, you know, you don't want to wish you had started sooner. I started right out of college and even sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I started in college. But I mean, what can you do? But, but basically like starting is the only way to do it. And there's so many open mics. There is such a like community, especially in the open mic scene of like, people who want to get started and they'll bop around from different mic like from mic to mic with each other and there is like a community and I just think obviously paying your rent is number one but once you do that once you have that set nobody is stopping you from getting on stage like you're not going to be booking incredible shows yet but the open mic scene is huge and anyone can get up I love that I think yeah so my age group it's like they keep pushing it off, pushing it off, like maybe some other time yeah. I have to like have the perfect job starting out and that's just so unrealistic. Like get the oh my God. jobs in. The yeah. Still You're never like gonna start off with your dream job. Like I wanted to be an NBC page so badly because that was like comedy, like, oh, like in the industry. I didn't get anything even close to that when I started out. I was like, working at SoulCycle and then I started PAing a little bit and then I got a full-time PA job and then I was like okay I want to be an office PA like I moved around so much in terms of where I made my money but like it's been so good because I've met so many people and I've you slowly learn what you want to do you're never gonna your first job out of college is like 99% never gonna be what you envisioned you know your life to be but it's just your entry level job is just going to be a way to make money and then you find your happiness outside of that and you find what you love about the job what you don't like and then you just move on from there you know it's not like a marriage you're right. not married to anything yeah. uh, just do it is my answer just do it nike said it best just do it <laughs> yeah they really did they nailed it <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for meeting with me. This was so fun. Um, of course.